people who want to manipulate you and take you down and destroy your lives and destroy your country. You know, I was, uh, I'm not on the London Assembly anymore, but when I was, I had a section where I questioned the vaccine minister. I never knew that we'd have a vaccine minister in this country. It's called the Dean's Army. Um, and uh, they weren't even going to let me have a question. And uh, I, when they actually uh, allowed me a question, I said to him, don't you realise that some of these experimental vaccines are causing all kinds of adverse health effects in Norway and Italy and America and other places. And that was back in February before we'd seen many of the deaths and adverse health effects that we've seen in this country. And he said, no, 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 I understand the point of your question and they're all safe. And the other people from all the different parties disparaged me for even answering, asking the question and cheered when someone interrupted me and I was cut off and I wasn't thinking my full time. That's what we're up against. And I'm very much active in the political sphere. Uh, as you know, I'm not going to say me. I know some people are courageously trying to get into the political parties and change them from the inside. You know, bless them for what they're doing. They're sincere in what they're trying to do. But I don't think that's going to work. Because I think they're all different hands of the same beast and they're too far gone to be redeemed. Beyond doubt! so that we have got an alternative. I know there are other people uh, doing similar things, uh, and God bless them too, and uh, I hope that we will all be able to work together to bring a challenge to the beast which is ruining our lives and our nation in the future. Um, so what do we do? What do we do about this? Well, these freedom rallies are absolutely wonderful and beautiful because when we come on them, they lift our spirits. <laughs> the government is trying to keep us atomized and isolated and away from each other so that our spirit is broken. But we're coming out and we're not going to let them break our spirit. It's wonderful to see you here. And I know I've been to many of the ones in London uh, and there's another one in a couple of weeks, which I hope is going to be the biggest one yet. And it's an absolutely key time for our country. This week and the next week and the week after are going to be tremendously important times for our nation and for where we're going to go and the direction we're going to go in. Even this day today is a tremendously important day because you have the G7 summit meeting in Cornwall. That's just what I think as well. It doesn't look to me just 
like it's crazy and insane and some of the things coming out of there are it doesn't just look like it's a complete puppet show and a piece of very bad theatre where they all stand socially distant from each other and then when they get together they're all close up and none of those people are quarantined and self-isolated but else who comes to this country from the US and Germany and France and Italy and Canada are supposed to, they're okay. They can come on their private jets and not have to quarantine. But it actually looks rather sinister. These dogs know exactly what they're like. whatsoever a year ago because I've always been a law-abiding citizen I've always supported the government and I've always supported the police but I think we need the most peaceful civil disobedience Go to the clubs, go to work, travel, just do everything normal and say, we're not having it, you're not going to take away our freedoms, they're not yours to take away, they are yours. regardless of what you say and what threats you might make against us. And it's difficult because there's two things that let the government continue to drag us down and to destroy our way of life. One is the police acting like tyrants. And I've seen that firsthand in London on some of the freedom rallies that I attended last September. And I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't have seen it with my own eyes. It was absolutely shocking to see columns of TSG riot police attack peaceful people. Now here today in Glastonbury, I can't see a single policeman. There's a little, there's a little car up the road. But thank you for leaving us alone and just letting us have a peaceful gathering in the middle of Glastonbury. Thank you to the police in Glastonbury. And letting us live our lives as we've always done. And if all the police forces around the country do that, there won't be any problem. But I've seen different forces act in different ways in London is particularly bad and in places it's not so bad. But that's one of the things. If they decide to act as the foot soldiers of tyranny, then that causes a problem. But for those who do, you're breaking your oath. You take an oath to uphold human rights and fundamental freedoms. Yeah. Just following orders, just doing my job is not an excuse 
for enforcing tyranny. If we can learn one thing from history, one thing, that is it. Just following orders is not an excuse. You must uphold our freedoms and our fundamental The other thing that makes it happen, and this is, this is harder, but this is our compliance. Not your compliance here, but the compliance of the masses who follow the orders sometimes because they want to, because they feel that they're better than you by showing, oh, I've got a mask and you haven't. Those people are gone. I don't care about them. But the ones who do it because they're afraid or because they just don't want the trouble and the hassle. There's a lot of people like that and would come here and they would just fall in with the group. Someone who might be wearing a mask to go to the shop would come here and see that we're not doing it and would take off their mask to fit in. There's a huge number of people who would just do that to fit in and to have a quiet life and think, oh, I'm going to take an experimental injection so that I can go on holiday. But then the holiday that they're promised in Portugal is dangled before them and then pulled away at the last minute. When are people going to realise that you're not going to get back your freedom by complying with a government that is abusing you? For your sake, for your, sake, for your children's sake, for your grandchildren's sake, for your nation's sake, wake up and stop complying. repugnant rules that take away our freedom. I don't know how much longer I've got left. I don't have to talk. Carry on slagging the government! As well as the political realm, the, the social realm, um, the legal realm, we've got to fight in all of those areas. I think many of you here also realise this is a spiritual battle as well. Over the last um, few weeks I've had people that they come to me and they say, we're looking in our Bibles and reading Revelation chapter 13. We're seeing what the, the prophet John said in the island of Patmos uh, 1900 years ago when he wrote that book and he looked into the future and wrote down things that seemed to be happening in some way today that that was something that was foreshadowed when it talks about a global government coming in and that we wouldn't be able to buy and sell this know that we're not just and others say to me and quote to me in verses that are very familiar we do not just fight against flesh and blood but against the powers and principalities in the heavenly realms and the spiritual realms and to put on the armor of God to be able to fight and stand against those enemies uh, when the day of battle comes. People are looking these things up and realizing that we need more than just to fight in the normal things that you can see that underneath it all there is a spiritual reality that is deeper and uh, more real that manifests itself in other realms. And we need to fight on that level as well.